Greetings, this is Pastor Steve. It's time to worship. This is Trinity Sunday, 2020. This is also St. John's Lutheran Church's 250th year. We're having our closing worship service today. So what did Trinity Sunday, 2020, and St. John's Lutheran Church of Bluebell, 250 years old, what on earth, what in heaven and earth is the connection? I prepared a bit of a slideshow here to help us see the way. Use a little scripture, a few pictures. Let's see what it tells us. Scripture says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Psalm says, O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name. You have set your glory above the heavens. God created the heavens and the earth, the dome and the sky, the lights in the dome of the sky. God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures. Let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, God created them. And this is what it looks like. Men and women, human beings, created in the image of God. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? God certainly is mindful of human beings and certainly cares for them and sent us his son. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The word was God, and the word became flesh and lived among us. We have seen his glory. The glory is of the Father's only son. Yes, we have seen Jesus who lived among us, who died for us, who rose again for us. And as he was about to be taken into heaven, he said to his followers, he said to us, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. So the followers went and made disciples of all nations. They even went to the colonies in the 18th century. To an area that would become known as Center Square. A church was founded there, St. John, 1769. This is the indenture, the official document that helped St. John get launched in Center Square. This isn't the first wooden church, but this is the first permanent church that we still use today. It's been modified many times. It doesn't look like this inside anymore, but it did in 1887. St. John had been served by many pastors here of the first hundred years, but there have been over 25 pastors who have served at St. John. And yes, men, women, and children have come and been members here and occasionally come outside to have their picture taken. And this is the last one to come outside and have his picture taken. Connor Sincilla confirmed last Sunday on Pentecost, our newest adult confirmed member. Now our 251st year is beginning. It's the same spirit that sent us out to serve our same Lord, to preach the same gospel, to give glory to our God, creator of heaven and earth. Here are words from Paul in the first century to help carry us into our 251st year. Brothers and sisters, put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. And finally, words from another pastor in our century. My humanity is bound up in yours. For we can only be human together. Certainly words for our time. It's Trinity Sunday, 2020. St. John's is just celebrating its 250th year going into the next year. Let's go. It's time to worship.
Good morning. Welcome to St. John Lutheran Church. This is Trinity Sunday. It's also a special day for us at St. John. We're ending our year of celebration, a year of marking our 250th anniversary. We're grateful for our special music today to help us make this more memorable. These are days when it's too bad that we can't have in-person worship. I think if we were all here together, we would be sighing together as we think about all that's been going on in our country. And these days, we need to have important conversations about race and racism. They're difficult. We had a chance to have a few of those in our Bible studies, our Zoom Bible studies this past week. We'll continue to keep talking. We'll continue to keep praying for our nation, for our leaders, for all our citizens. Now let us continue our worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us all at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite the children to come at this time, get near the TV screen. We're going to take a trip downstairs and learn a little bit about St. John's. Hi there. We're back in the great room. There's Jesus showing us the way. And this is a special day for us at St. John. This is a bulletin from a year ago. We began our celebration of 250 years of ministry. We're going to kind of end that today. But uh, I thought about the history here at St. John, and I thought about these steps. These steps have been here. They kind of lead us to the wonderful history of St. John, and they're going to lead us in a special way today. So let's see what they might have to tell us, these steps. We begin way down here with the first step. 1769, that's when St. John begins. The second step, what's going to be here? 1773, that's when the first church building was built. Back then it was made out of wood. What's our next step going to show us? 1799, the first pipe organ. I wonder if Mr. Baker played that pipe organ. 1840. Beginning of Sunday school. It took them a few years, but they have a Sunday school in 1840. The next step up, a few more years later, what's going to happen? 1880, the first edition of the St. John Messenger, the first newsletter, 1880. Let's keep going up these steps. 1895, Luther League, youth group, that was the old name for the youth group. 1895, 1909, St. John Ladies Auxiliary was formed. 1914, St. John's was lit with electric lights. Wow, you could worship at night and did not need to worry about those candles. All right, another step up. A few more years later, what's gonna happen? 1917, they put the stained glass windows. You can still see those beautiful windows today. 1920, the first Boy Scout troop started here at St. John and still goes strong for us. 1923, Skip Hack Pike was paved. Finally, we can get to church even faster. We can leave a little later, sleep a little longer before we come to church. 1928, women voted for the first time at a St. John annual meeting. Nine years after they got the right to vote in the country, they could vote here at St. John. We get near the top. 1961, the first vacation Bible school. We're planning on it this summer. It may be a little bit different, but it started back in 1961 here. 1979, our nursery school began. Mrs. Walther and others started our nursery school. And look, we're at the top of the step already. 1999, the great room in the Sunday school building, we're at it. The great room, this is where we are. This wonderful room that gathers us on Sundays and will gather us again one of these days. So here we are heading into what year now is coming? Next year, 2021. What does Jesus have in store for us? Where is Jesus going to lead us at St. John? Well, we're going to have to stay tuned and find out where Jesus might want us to go to spread his gospel. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for St. John's, 
for the women, the men, the children who have been here for these past 250 years, all the leaders, all the good ministries that have happened, continue to be with us with your grace and your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so, and God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth in every kind. And it was so. And God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it. And it was so. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that God had done in creation.
A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The Gospel for Trinity Sunday is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We confess this Sunday after Sunday. Today is Trinity Sunday. Time to give more thought to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Or as the hymn says, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Wow, the Trinity. Not one of those 25 words or less topics, is it? This is a story about Augustine, the early church leader and theologian. He spent much of the last years of his life writing about the Trinity. One day he took a walk along the beach. He saw a little boy running back and forth from the water with a seashell. Augustine approached the boy and asked him what he was doing. The boy looked up earnestly and said, I'm going to empty the ocean into this hole. The learned theologian leaned down, looked at the boy and the hole, and said, Your hole is not big enough to hold all the waters of the ocean. The boy turned to him and said, Sir, that may be true, but your mind is not big enough to grasp the Trinity. According to the story, Augustine was not offended. He believed the boy to have been an angel. The doctrine of the Trinity can bring the greatest of theologians to their humble knees. And that includes not so great humble pastors. I made one of my first mistakes as an ordained minister on Trinity Sunday at St. John Lutheran Church in Overbrook. It was my first service there. I'd worked on the service with the organist, with the secretary. It would be my first time leading the liturgy from the old red service book and hymnal. I had a lot in my mind in addition to the Trinity that day. I finished the service, same things seemed to have gone all right. People greeted me very friendly as they left the church. Then one parishioner came up and said, nice job, pastor, but, always the but. Maybe there was some heresy in my treatment of the Trinity. Pastor, he went on, was there any reason we skipped the first hymn, Holy, 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 today? <laughs> I think I said, whoops. <laughs> we sang it as a makeup hymn on the next Sunday. And whenever he sang that hymn, I would be humbled and reminded that in the pastoral ministry there are many oops moments. If nothing else, Trinity Sunday keeps me humble. Did the 250th anniversary planners know that St. John's special celebration would begin and end on a Trinity Sunday? Did they want to keep me humble? Actually, it's no big deal that we begin and end in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Each worship service where we gather is a tribute to the triune God. No big deal. But this year, this year has become a big deal. A year that's brought us to our humble knees. Perhaps a good vantage point for remembering our humble roots. St. John began its congregational life outside the building. 
There was no church building for four years. Worship was held in homes. No pews, no bulletins. Likely there was singing, maybe coffee after. In 1777, within years after the church building had been built finally, our building gave way to something other than worship. We read in the history, Reverend Schmidt opened the door as a temporary refuge and hospital for soldiers wounded in the Battle of Germantown. When called upon, St. John responded. Our present worship space, modified many times over the years, was built in 1835. On a couple of occasions, the sanctuary was closed for worship. During renovations, seven months in 1917, three months in 1939, worship took place outside this building. Long before 2020, St. John knew about epidemics and pandemics. Pastor Schmidt contracted and survived yellow fever in 1793. St. John was closed for three months in 1916 because of the Spanish flu. And in 1918, from October to December, including Christmas, closed for the same flu. We miss gathering together at the table these days. We've grown to appreciate our weekly celebration of communion, which is actually a relatively new practice at St. John's. Celebrating communion twice a year was the practice until 1868, when it became quarterly. That was changed in 1937, when communion would be celebrated on the first Sunday of each church season in midway through the Trinity season. As we're considering now how we might reopen St. John, I must tell you, my hunger for sharing the supper with sisters and brothers at St. John is heavy on my heart. 2020 will certainly be a year for the history books. And the next edition of St. John's History will have to dedicate several paragraphs to 2020. We're not necessarily writing history these days, but we're living history. We're living history that's reflected in the lessons we had last week, Pentecost, and today, Trinity. The Spirit came last week, empowering the church's mission. That mission we hear today from Jesus' own lips. Go into all the world, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded. And remember, I am with you always to the close of the age. We've been sent by Jesus with the breath of God's Spirit to bring God's life-giving good news to all people. There is forgiveness. There is reconciliation. There is grace, love, and mercy. There is a loving God who promises to be with us, indeed, who walked with us in the darkest of days in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. In our mission statement, we affirm this. We have been chosen by God to reach out to the world and to one another as witnesses to the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We affirm we're all in on this mission, on this history. In the last three months, we've adapted and found ways to continue our mission, our outreach, our worship. Just as St. John was ready to respond to the emergency in 1777, we've been able to respond to the pandemic of 2020, creating a virtual worship refuge. We put together a dynamic team to deliver tapes and written worship materials each week. We've done well living in this history. We're also living in another history, a history that goes way back, back to Genesis. God creating the heavens and the earth. God creating and placing life on this earth. God creating women and men in God's very image. In our present history, we've lost our sense of this core history. We've acted as if we didn't know 
that we share something with every other human being. That we're made in the image of God. In our present history in the past weeks, we've been reminded of how we've lost our way in God's created order. We've been reminded that we live with another virus. It's called racism. To many of us, it can seem invisible. To many of our neighbors of color, it's never out of sight. In the last days, we've been reminded of the racism that's part of our history. Reminded through very dramatic and vivid images of a man being killed in the street right before our eyes. The hurts and frustrations, the distress and anger that many of our neighbors have kept out of our sight have been unleashed by these images. Just as the novel coronavirus called for a response from St. John, so now this racism virus, which is by no means, no means new, calls on us for a response. We need to set up again a refuge and hospital for the wounded. And the truth is, it's not just our neighbors of color who are wounded. We've all been wounded. God's creation intent has been wounded by our thoughts, words, and deeds. We need to have conversations, difficult discussions to talk about the history that's brought us, our country, our nation, our community to this point. We white Americans need, I need to listen to stories of hurt and pain. We need, I need to face my thoughts, words, and deeds which have caused hurt and pain. We need to be a hospital, a place of healing. And that's what St. John has been from the very beginning. That's what the church has been from the very beginning. Following the example of Jesus, the great healer, the source of forgiveness. Women and men and children have long come to the church for healing, and we are still open for healing. We still baptize for the forgiveness of sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We still remember our baptisms at the font of healing. One of the privileges that I have as an ordained minister, as a pastor, a pastor who's had his share of oops moments. A pastor who can't explain the Trinity in 25 words or less. A pastor who has sinned against God, against neighbor. One of the wonderful things I get to do is pronounce words of healing to my fellow sisters and brothers in Christ. Fellow human beings made in the image of God. These words. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority... I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. What better words for us to hear? This is a place of healing. This is a place of healing. So as we close our 250th year, as we begin our 251st year, I invite us to hear again the words from Paul, written to another congregation facing challenging times, calling on them to be a refuge of healing. Paul wrote this. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. In the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.
Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today's prayer is Holy Trinity Sunday. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. We are grateful for the 250 years of gospel ministry that has been inspired by your spirit at St. John Lutheran Church. We are grateful for members and leaders, for Sunday school teachers and musicians, for committees, for pastors, for special events and serving opportunities for worship and Bible study, for fellowship and liturgical moments that connected us personally with one another and with your grace. Strengthen us to continue to be bold in our proclamation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of creation, you called everything into being. We marvel at the work of your hands. We are in awe by the vastness of our universe. Our hearts are gladdened by the earth that you have given to us to inhabit and care for. Bless all efforts to sustain and restore our environment. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land to come together in these times to attend to the health and welfare of their inhabitants. Instill wisdom and compassion in all who make difficult decisions. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. Help us to see your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering all who are victims of prejudice and racism. Work with all of us in this nation to attend to the difficult work of addressing our past history of race and moving to a time when we all can live with safety and dignity. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Console, heal, and nourish all in need. We pray especially for those on our prayer list. Adina, Kathy, John, Eric, Tom, Jack, John, Charlene, Rob, Sue, Lauren, Bill, Dave, Gladys, Dylan, Randy, Dorothy, Judy, Jim, Jerry, Hadley, Robert, Abby, Laura, and Donna. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of companionship, you accompany this body of faith. Grant us loving patience and kindness, even as our hearts long to gather together in church, to gather around your table of grace. May we show our care for others as we emerge from our times of quarantine. 
Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We offer prayers for the family of George Floyd and all those who mourn with them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's that time to share the peace, and on this special Sunday, we have a special way we're going to be sharing the peace. Several people have been able to send in a short video of them sharing the peace. So after we share peace together, you'll see some of those video clips and see some of the faces of people that were missing each Sunday that we would normally look in the face to share the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Happy 250th. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Friends at St. John, peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Peace of the Lord be with you. The 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 peace of the Lord be with you always. The peace of the Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Hi, St. John from Terry and Mike. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The peace of the Lord be with you. The peace, peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Hi, Linda Catherwood here. As we conclude our 250th year, uh, I'd like to wish you God's peace, love, and hope to see you soon. Take care.
that time in our service when we would be passing the play, the time of thanksgiving, remembering the many things we're thankful for. I'm thankful for the gift of music. It's wonderful. Thankful for the great response that we've had from our members during this time when we can't come to church and place our offerings. You've all managed to find ways to support the church and its ministry. And this reminds me, there's one more thing we're thankful for. Yesterday, to celebrate our county becoming a yellow county, we had a wedding. Jessica Bruner and David Knoebel were married in a very small service, much smaller than Jess had planned, outside on the steps of the church. So we were able to celebrate the uh, next phase of our opening up with a very small outside wedding. So we're thankful for that. And now as we hear the music, we can keep in mind the things we're thankful for. Let us pray. 
God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. And this we pray through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Amen. Now it's time to join together in the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us to say our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.